Hi everybody, I'm Christy Gordon, and welcome to Washington Grown. Granny Smith, Red Delicious, Honey Crisp, they're all varieties of Washington's biggest agricultural commodity. You guessed it, this episode is all about Washington apples. We're off to Zirkle Fruit in central Washington to chat about our state's official fruit, and we'll even learn how to properly pick apples. That's hard. It is. Then we'll check out a popular restaurant in Spokane, Luna, where we'll cook up some delicious butternut squash ravioli with apples and Dungeness crab. I love the crunch of the apple. And we're in the kitchen with the galloping gourmet himself, Graham Care, whipping up a tasty breakfast dish. Then we'll take a drive north of Spokane to Green Bluff for their annual apple festival and try some fresh pressed cider, make some pies, and of course, taste some apples. All this and much more on Washington Grown. Explosion of fragrance. Safety first, Safety that's my first. motto. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> oh, her bicep's bigger than mine. <laughs> Our first stop is in Spokane at Luna. It's a quaint restaurant that only serves top quality Northwest cuisine. Luna focuses on locally grown food. The restaurant utilizes a backyard garden to provide the restaurant's herbs and vegetables and owns a bakery next door that supplies the freshest bread around. I chatted with Luna's executive chef, Zachary Stone, about the importance of locally grown food. The least amount of distance for the food to travel from where it's grown to your plate is very, very important. You know, fresh food is better food, it's healthier for you, the less time it has to really deteriorate as far as the vitamins and minerals in the food. When people come to Luna, what are they going to experience? Well, Luna is a very unique restaurant. We try to focus on local ingredients, you know, stuff we can get right in our back door. You know, the Northwest is just full of, you know, really unique and really delicious stuff. It's our neighborhood bistro. It's our go-to spot. I love just about everything. We generally get pizzas when we're here. It's where we gather to celebrate birthdays and graduations and weddings, and it's always a fun, festive place. And I could go on and on and on. There's nothing I don't like about Luna. We try to do, you know, fresh, obviously, and simple and delicious. That's really the key. Um, you don't have to overcomplicate food. You just have to treat the food with respect cook it the right way and then present it in a beautiful manner and that just creates an overall great experience. Later in the show, we're hopping in Luna's kitchen to cook up some butternut squash ravioli with apples and Dungeness crab. I love the crunch of the apple mm -hmm. and the crab is a really neat surprise. Yeah. Millions of apples are picked in Washington each year. Val Thomas Matson is off to Grant County to meet farmer Aaron Erlacher and see where some of those billions of apples come from. So Aaron, we're here today at Zirkle Fruit Company. Tell us a little bit about the farms because we're at just one of the properties, correct? Correct. Yeah, we're in Mattawa right now and there's we actually have ranches all the way from the Canadian border all the way down to the Oregon border. And so all within the Columbia Basin, all kind of following the Columbia River because that's a real fertile area and, and it kind of lends itself being in central Washington to the, the, kind of, uh, the kind of environment we need to grow good quality fruit. About how many different varieties of apples do you all grow here? Probably about 10 different varieties. There's very little we don't grow at this ranch. And this variety that we're looking at right now, talk to me about that. This is Lady Alice and this is this is our own proprietary variety, so we're the only ones licensed to grow it and sell it. Well, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's, it's great. Would you like to try some? I'd love, okay. I'd love a nibble. So what I look for is I'm looking for a real dark red, kind of a real brilliant red when I'm picking mm -hmm. and for, the, for the sweetest apple. And then you can see also there's a yellow background. I'll give you a little taste of that. I always prefer to peel the skin off. Oh, do you? Some people leave it on. I, I go I go either way. Sometimes I just eat them straight out of the field, too. Right. I just take a big bite out of it. Now, I've always heard, though, that the peel is the most nutritious part of the apple. It is. It is. But I think it takes away from the flavor a little bit. But some people, it's just a preference. 
Mm. What do you think? That is really nice and mellow, and it's sweet, but it's also tart. But it feel it tastes like a really great mixture. Talk to me about the planting process. This is called a high density orchard on a tatura trellis. This is a V trellis. Okay. We have to trellis the apples because if we don't, these trees are very weak. They'll fall over with all this fruit load on them. This block is um, this is six years old now. And usually you won't get any fruit until about year three. Okay. Year three is about the first, so you've got to grow them for two years, and then you get fruit on year three. Okay, so uh, then you harvest in September, October? It depends, you know. The earliest apple we harvest is Gala here, um, is Gala, and we start in the middle of August. And then the last apple we harvest is Pink Lady, which is middle of November. Really? Yeah, all the way till mid-November. Oh, okay. What is it about farming that you love, being a farmer here in Washington State? Oh, I, I have to say first and foremost the people. I love the people that I work with. Um, we have really, really talented and great people here. Just really salt of the earth people. And that's probably the first thing I love. And second's the freedom. I love being outdoors. And yeah, it just kind of seemed to be a natural fit. So yeah, I love it out here. You want to know how to, how to properly pick yes, an apple? Yes, how do I properly pick an so apple? So we'll focus on this one right okay. here. The proper way is to put your finger right here. And you don't want to just pluck it. That's what a lot of people do mm -hmm. when they first come out. You just want to put your finger there and twist it. Put your pointer finger on the stem. Oh. That'll work too. God, that's hard. It is, isn't it? It's, oh, it's a I skill. Got leaves. That's okay. I got leaves on my first one too. But I think that's cute. Hey, that is cute. That's a picture right there. To learn more about farming in Washington, visit our website at wagrown.com. I'm here with Steve Shepard from Washington State University, and he's kind of the bee guy. We're going to be talking to him about the ever-important honeybees, right? And uh, you are an entomologist here at WSU. Yes, yes. And doing all sorts of research involving bees. Yeah, we, we work on honeybee breeding and honeybee genetics here, and, and some other issues related to colony health. So you have some orchards and lots of bees. How many bees are? We, well, we usually have around 200 colonies, and then we move some of them into the university orchard for pollination of tree fruits. Yeah, important. Yeah. One of the, the yeah. things that we need bees for. Yes, indeed. How important are they? They're, they're quite important if you like to eat fruits and vegetables. If you only care about eating wheat and rice, uh, you don't really need bees, but, but a lot of the vegetables and uh, Fruits require pollination, nut crops, and also, believe it or not, uh, things like alfalfa, the this, this seed production is dependent on insect pollination, so it's really important for uh, milk and dairy products and meat production. And here in Washington State, we have a lot of important crops that need to be pollinated. Indeed we do, yeah. So we're the, you know, the largest producer of apples in the country, mm -hmm. and they definitely require insect pollination. What's a typical day for a bee? <laughs> you know, just like the farmer, it depends on the time of season. Sure. So in the winter time, the bees, the bees live for four to six months in the winter. They uh, actually group together in what's called a cluster, okay. and they consume honey and shiver. And the shivering generates heat, and so even if it's 10 or 20 below zero outside of the hive, yeah. The cluster inside will be about 70 degrees Fahrenheit, wow. so they to generate heat. Uh, during the summer, the lifespan of the bees is only four to six weeks, and they um, once they hatch out as an adult, they go through a set of tasks within the hive. They initially start just eating honey and then feeding older larvae, and then as they get up to about three weeks old, they kind of transition to going outside. And then the last part of their life, they're foragers, mm -hmm. and they can live maybe a couple of weeks as a forager. And they literally wear themselves out in bringing back pollen. That's really amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Fascinating life of a bee. Yep. Yeah. Coming up, we're back in Spokane at Luna to cook up some delicious butternut squash ravioli with apples and crab. We're back in Spokane at Luna. This warm, inviting restaurant focuses on Northwest cuisine using only the best locally grown ingredients. And executive chef Zachary Stone says that's key when it comes to making the best food. 
the least amount of distance for the food to travel from where it's grown to your plate is very, very important. You know, fresh food is better food, it's healthier for you. Food's fantastic. Obviously, we wouldn't come back if the food wasn't great. The beach is great here. In fact, some of the best beaches in Spokane is right here in Luna. The atmosphere is so fun. As a matter of fact, I was here last night. <laughs> now, we're cooking up a delicious dish of butternut squash ravioli with apples and Dungeness crab. First thing we gotta do, we just gotta cut this in half, core it out. Easiest way to do that, just to cut the top off. Cut it right in half like that. And then you want to take a spoon and just scoop out the seeds. the seeds. Okay. After we core the squash, we coat the top with olive oil and bake for 45 minutes. Once the squash is cooked, we separate it from the skin. There you go. So just flatten it a little bit? Yep, just flat it out. Okay. And then just scrape the meat right off. There we go. Perfect. Then we dice an onion. You use a lot of fresh and local ingredients a absolutely. here at Luna. Absolutely. You know, the, uh, the fresher the food is, the better it's going to taste, and the better it's going to be for you. Next, we saute the onion and add it to our squash with a little salt and goat cheese. And I'm just going to kind of mix these together. Oh my gosh. So now we make ravioli? Yep. All right, so for the dough, I have three and a half cups of high gluten flour, four large eggs, going to crack those into here. Next I have one tablespoon of olive oil and we just mix that together and you can mix this as long as you want. You want to develop the gluten in the pasta okay. to give it a nice texture. You can't really over mix it? No, you, you really can't. You can let this go up to an hour oh my gosh. Of, of just mixing it. Yeah, okay. yeah. After the dough is mixed, we put it in the fridge for a half hour. I've got my pasta here. Ready to roll. So I'm just going to cut a little piece off. It's best to work, so work in, in small batches, small batches. <laughs> uh huh. You'd need and I'm five just gonna, to <laughs> yeah. Hold it. I'm just gonna flatten it out just a little bit. Just run it through the mixer. Yeah. You don't have to. No. Nope. Crank it. You know, right. you can use a hand crank. I found it's a lot easier to use an attachment with the KitchenAid. Keeps both hands free. After a few more times through, our pasta dough is ready. We're good to and go. And there we have our nice sheet of pasta dough. Look at how beautiful that is. That was easy. Yeah, oh yeah. Now we're ready to stuff our raviolis. Well, I have a portion scoop. And that's so handy. Look how oh, it easy that it, is. It makes it so quick. Then we use an egg wash to seal the raviolis. And you just want to go around each piece of okay. filling. Creating a glue. That's right. And you just take your top piece, just lay it on the top like that. And then you want to just press them down all around the filling. Try to get as much air out as possible. All right. Finally, we use a pastry cutter to cut into squares. Now that our raviolis are ready, we move to the stove to start cooking. With fresh pasta, you want the water to be boiling. You don't want your pasta to get mushy on you. And that can happen if your water isn't hot enough. Okay. While our raviolis cook, we brown some butter and add our apples. And then it's time to plate. So I'm just going to take a little bit of fresh Parmesan. You have a meal bit. here and just the garnishes. <laughs> yeah. Now what's that? This is Dungeness crab. Really? Yep. And then just a little bit of sage oil. Well, let's give it a try, All shall right. we? One for you, Perfect. one for me. Get a little bit of everything. Huh. Get some apple. Okay, there we go. Mmm. Mmm. I love the crunch of the apple. Mm -hmm. And the crab is a really neat surprise. Yeah. Yep, add, some, add a little bit more depth. Mm -mm -mm. Thank you so much. You're welcome. To get the recipe for Luna's butternut squash ravioli, log on to our website at wagrown.com. Summer is a unique time for enjoying freshly picked Washington strawberries, raspberries, cherries, black, and blueberries. Fortunately, during the colder months, when the berries are no longer fresh, we can still enjoy a variety of frozen and canned berries. This summer, my family visited a local farmer's market and bought an array of berries from the Berry Lady. The delicate berries were sun-warmed and tasted like droplets of sweet sunshine. We had another summer berry experience with my grandmother turning 99 years old. She still drives to her hair appointments. When I asked her where she wanted to go for her birthday lunch, she chose a local seafood restaurant that happened to be serving seasonal berry shortcake containing four varieties of Washington-sourced berries. The dessert was exquisite, 
and the richly colored berries sparkled atop the shortcake. As a nutritionist, I couldn't help but think about the health-promoting properties of berries and cherries, such as how the rich red, black, blue, and purple colors boost our body's defense against diseases like cancer and heart disease, coupled with minerals like potassium that help regulate blood pressure and heart function. Berries have been eaten for millennia and have been added to pancakes, cobblers, yogurt, and pies since the invention of the griddle. Especially when they're still freshly available, why not surprise a friend or relative with the gift of berries? Because you never know, you might just get invited back for pie. Coming up, we're in legendary chef Graham Kerr's kitchen, and he's teaching us how to make a healthy Swiss breakfast dish that will keep you full all morning. Many of you already know, Washington is a great place for growing apples. In fact, there's so many varieties, we even got this cool little guy here, the Grapel. This is an apple infused with grape juice for a unique flavor you're not gonna find anywhere else. Let's see what the people here in Spokane think about this little guy. All right, Devin, you like apples? Yes, I do. All right, I got just the thing for you here. I was wondering if you could take one of these slices, try it out, and see if you can guess what variety it is. Testing me, huh? Testing. What's it taste like? Sweet. I'm not an apple connoisseur, but this is a pretty good apple. Nice crisp. Not too tart, but a little tartness and, and very crisp. A little bit sour. A little bit sour? Is it good? Yeah. Brayburn. Honey crisp. Pink lady. Uh, I don't think I've ever tried this before. No. No. A gala? How's it taste first? This is a grapple. Oh, check it out. This is a grapple. You are correct. It is a grapple. Grapple, grapple. Hippopotamus, hippopotamus. That is actually called a grapple. Oh, wow. Grapel. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. Can you taste it? Uh, that, that would explain it, yes. <laughs> it is an apple infused with grape juice. I was, I was gonna say, I just, I just tasted the grape, so I was like. <laughs> there it is. That's crazy. <laughs> Tomas and I are outside of Spokane at Green Bluff visiting Walter's Fruit Ranch for their annual Apple Festival. There's so much to do up here, so we decided to divide and conquer. Tomas is checking out the fun activities while I'm finding out about all the delicious products they make. My first stop is to meet with the owner, Jason Morell, to chat a little bit about the orchard. So tell me a little bit of the history about Walter's Fruit Ranch. It's family owned and run. Yes, it's a, there's about three generations this farm has been running and that's kind of what uh, keeps it running. What all kinds of fruit do you grow here? Uh, we start off with cherries, mm -hmm. then we move into apricots, then we have peaches, and then we do apples. Apples. Mm -hmm. Apples are the are they the biggest. Th they're the star. They're the biggest. They uh, take up about 28 acres of our 50 acres here wow. at Walters. Now Jason and I are off to check out one of the products Green Bluff is best known for: their take and bake pies. Each pie is handmade with fruit right from the orchard. The ladies are hard at work making dozens of pies, so I stepped in to see if I could lend a hand. Mine's looking more oblong <laughs> and definitely not round. I'm gonna make a square pie. <laughs> Once the pies are ready, they're flash frozen and sold at Walters and in grocery stores around Spokane. Now that we've made and tasted some pies, I need something to wash it down with. So we're heading to the apple press where they bring in apples from the orchard and use them to make fresh apple cider. This is what we just did here? Right out of that one. No so this way. is single apple variety. That is so good. Now let's check in to see what fun activities Tomas has found here at Walters. And he has a very special guest with him. I'm here with Anna Lucia, my five-year-old daughter, where we're going to have a little bit of fun. You know, other than the great food that's here at the farm, there's also a lot of activities, like the corn cannon. Let's go do it. I want to do that. <laughs> that's the one? Yeah. All right, here we go. I'm going to load it in. OK, stand by. Let's see here. Hit the button. Whoa, there it goes. <laughs> <laughs> my goodness, you laid on the trigger on that one. Which, do you want a red one or a yellow one? Um, or a green one? Green. Hey, this one looks good. Right here. Right here. Right. Okay. Oh, look at that. You got the stem. Perfect. Oh, that looks good. Why don't you give it by that? What do you think? 
good. Good? Mmm. Hey, don't leave me hanging. Just go get you. <laughs> Holy moly. Is that it? Yeah. No. <laughs> well, why'd you pick this one? Because. Because why? I like it. Fair I'm going to name him Jackie. She likes it. A lot of school kids come through here for tours and stuff, and, and then you have the families who uh, bring their kids out here. Seems like it's a really good way for people to connect to the food that they eat. Exactly, that's the, our number one focus with the school tours, is, is education. Showing the, the, the kids and the, the next generation um, about the, the land and where your fruit comes from and all the process it takes to getting it there. Um, and, the kids are really amazed when they see the whole process laid out. And so that we get a lot of kids year after year can't wait to come up and uh, experience our tours. We're, we're all you pick here at our orchard. People, all of our fruits gets you picked. It, that's the experience that we're teaching. To learn more about agriculture in Washington, visit our website at wagrown.com. that we get to be in the kitchen with Graham Care, bringing you into his kitchen. Thank and you. we're gonna do something fun today that I've never made before. What is it called? It's called muesli. muesli. Or if you really want to go to town, Dr. Becher Benno's muesli. 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 Yeah, that's right, <laughs> okay. that's, that's very good. I would get I that if I was there. that part. <laughs> and what is it exactly? Well, what happened, Dr. Becher Benno, was, it's Mr. Big in terms of raw foods mm -hmm. and wonderful exciting adventures in the Alps and all that sort of thing. He lived in Zurich. He took what he had in season, which were apples, just across the border in Italy he got a nice lemon. He was dealing at that time with a sweetened condensed milk, but it's just loaded with sugar. sugar. And so I just don't think we need that anymore this day. So what okay. I'm putting in its place is a Low, uh, low fat, not no fat. No, no fat yogurt is chalky, but low fat, one and a half percent, is really nice. I like the flavor of it. So I took the so lid off. Vanilla. So I just want to add this instead when we get to that place. Okay. But let's start at the beginning. First, we cut our apples in half. Aren't they lovely? This what is kind? A, these are Granny Smiths? These are Granny Smiths. Okay. Apparently, there was a Granny Smith who had a pie place on the Yarrow River near Melbourne in Australia. And she took Macintosh apples and a very green cooking apple that she made. Mm -hmm. it, and she would throw the debris down the, the river bank where two of these cut seeds somehow came together. Somehow came together. And, and they grew this special tree, yeah. which is called Granny Smith. Oh. I work on grating our Granny Smith apples as Graham measures out our oats, and we use more than the original muesli calls for. He would simply say, what I want to do is I want to want a tablespoonful of oats. In, the, in this case, I've used two quarter cups. Okay. So I've used more, right. because he was not aware of the Bee Gees. The Bee Gees? You know the Bee Gees? Yeah, I know the Bee Gees. All right. Well, this is the beta glucans. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And beta-glucans get into the blood system and help to reduce bad cholesterol. Okay. Then we add in some dried, tart cherries and cover our mixture with water. Now, overnight, that's going to soften down. Mm -hmm. um, and so this is the one that has softened down here. Oh, look at that. Same quantity. Yeah. And just let that drain for a moment. <laughs> it's like putting you to work like this. <laughs> no, I should be put to work. Yeah. See that amount of juice from there? Oh yeah. That's good stuff. And if you're making a smoothie, uh -huh. then you could throw you that, that into in a smoothie. We cut our lemon in half and squeeze the juice into our mixture and stir in some of that low-fat yogurt. And you just have to add it in accordance with how much you want, but there's be about a cup of yogurt to that. Then we throw in the grated apple and some ground up mixed nuts. Dr. Becker-Benner would have used hazelnuts because that's what he had. Mm -hmm. But we've got but these, can... this mixture, sure. so this is it. 
That's it. That's, that's it. That's, that's breakfast. Great. So this is what you get mm -hmm. as a portion. That's you a see. big portion though. Well, do you know this portion is going to be about 220 calories, right? Yeah. And which you need to have but if you're will, going to have a, a reasonable like. breakfast. There you go. Now I'm going to get my, it does help if... Th this would be for four people, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. And I've found that kids love this. Um, and especially if you have the sweet and condensed milk. Sure. Yeah. Well, let's so, have so, a bite. I'm going to get a little bit of everything in there. Yeah. Mmm. Yeah. Mm. Isn't what a great texture. start to your day. Yes. Good texture. You, you see, everything about food is taste, aroma, color, and texture. And this, this it doesn't look bad. It has a nice appearance to it. It's fresh and thing. And it has such a good taste to it. Nuts and it? a little bit of crunch. I love the cherries in there. Oh, the cherries, wonderful. Very they tart. give you that sweet sort of mm -hmm. surprise. You know. mm. Mm. What a great way to start your day. I feel like getting out for a run. I know. Me too. Ready for a run? Let's do it. <laughs> okay. To get Graham's muesli recipe, head to our website at wagrown.com. With such a consistently delicious, top quality product, it's no wonder our state is so well known for its apples. That's it for this episode of Washington Grown. Thanks for watching.